wool blankets like this one are an essential part of traditional bushcraft. Not only can they be used for sleeping in, but they can also be used as an outer garment. But to get the most out of it as a garment, you need some way of keeping this together. If you're interested in seeing what I came up with, keep watching. So this video is mostly for those of viewers who are already familiar with the benefits of using a wool blanket. However, for those of you that don't, let's do a comparison with a down blanket like this one. So to begin with, yes, down blankets are extremely warm, they also are extremely light, and they come packed down into very compact packages. You know, a wool blanket is heavy and it is bulky. Having said that though, a wool blanket is much more durable than a down blanket, especially if you're going to wear it around a fire because sparks will not burn holes through a wool blanket like it will through a down blanket. So the other thing about wool blankets is if you lay down on top of this, it's still going to be as insulative as it was just wrapped around you. That's not true of a down blanket. When you compress the down, you lose all of its insulative value. And finally, Wool blankets are known to keep their warmth and their insulative value even when they're wet. Uh, not so much a down blanket. If this gets wet, it's pretty much useless. All right, so we've done a bit of a comparison. And what I want to show you now are a few of the ways I've come up with for keeping a wool blanket closed around me so I can wear it like a coat or a cloak. Uh, the one, some of the ways I'm going to show you don't work so well with down blankets, but I do have something that does. So those of you who are already using a wool blanket as an outer garment are probably familiar with the blanket pin. So this is my modern interpretation of an age-old wrought iron blanket pin, but I made this with modern materials and I'll show you how I did that in a few minutes time. But in order to use a blanket pin, you start by grabbing two pieces of your blanket along the front edge, drive the pin portion of it through the blanket, both sides, then take the C, put it behind the pin, and rotate it down. And that locks the blanket in place in front of you. Now your hands are free for doing whatever you want to do, any camp chores or you know anything else that you need to do with your hands. And you can move this up and down depending on how closed you want it around your neck. And of course, you, I could have thrown the blanket up over my head to create a hood before doing this. So this is a great way of keeping your blanket closed. Now there is a more modern interpretation. If you don't have one of these and you don't want to make one, then you can purchase these. This also is a blanket pin. This is what exactly what it looks like, a giant safety pin. In order to use this, unspring the pointed edge, take two edges of your material, drive the pin down through and back through, then close it up into the safety, safety position and it will hold your cloak together perfectly. But what if you don't want to poke holes through your wool blanket? Or maybe you do have a down blanket like this one or a military wooby or poncho liner like this one and you just don't want to be driving pins through it and making big holes. What alternatives are there? Well, let me show you what I came up with. All right, so this is what I came up with. It's a DIY cloak clasp. I'll come in a little closer so you can see it on the blanket. And what I'll do now is take you down to the, down to the tabletop and show you what I made it from and how I made it. Okay, before I show you how I made this modern interpretation of a cloak clasp, let me show you again the blanket pin that I have, and this is my homemade one. Uh, yeah, very simple device, and if you look online, I'll put a picture up on the screen of a very traditional wrought iron one. You know, it, they would look nice and be nice to have, but uh, I didn't particularly want to pay anyone to make one for me, so I decided to see if I can make one myself. And can you guess what I made this out of? A skewer, a stainless steel skewer that came in a package, I think if it's eight for a dollar fifty from Dollar Rammer, our local dollar store. And I just did some basic measurements, cut the point end off, and that's what became the pointy end of the of the uh, blanket pin. Uh, made a circle that I thought was about the right length and bent back the ends all the way around. And of course, I did have to bend over the shaft of the pin before I closed off the two ends on there. That's all it is. And it's about two and a half, not quite three inches in diameter. You can make it any size you want, as long as the pin is wider than the diameter of your circle, it's going to work for you. See, I could have made this a little longer, but that's fine right there. Now, I've seen other videos where people say you can get multi-use out of your blanket pin by sharpening this up to the point where you can create an all out of it. So if you need to do some emergency repairs on your pack or your boots or anything else, then you can use this as a punch to drive through so that you can run some cord or maybe the inner, 
inner part of a paracord. That's not a bad idea. This is not quite sharp enough to do that, but it wouldn't take me very much to run this on a stone and bring it up to sharpness. The only reason I don't is because it gets a little bit uh, you know, dangerous maybe, not so much dangerous, but it can cause damage in my pack and I don't particularly want to poke myself on it. So right now it's not that sharp to, that it it's going to hurt me. So that's how you make your homemade DIY blanket pin. I don't think more instruction than that is necessary. All right, so what, and this of course is the safety pin. I think I'll give you another close up and that's all it is, is just a safety pin that runs about, not quite four inches, about three and a half inches long. And these can be purchased on Amazon. I think I picked these ones up on either or eBay or AliExpress, and you can get a uh, you know a, a package of different color ones for uh, you know very few dollars. So yeah, blanket pins. You may be able to find those in your local fabric stores as well. All right. So where did I come up with this? This is my blanket or cloak clasp holding the two sides together. Well, I originally got the idea off of some pictures that showed up on Pinterest of, of all places, and it showed people doing the reenactments, and they had these clasps holding their cloaks together. And they're very ornate, again, wrought iron. They're almost like jewelry in some cases. And I thought, uh, yeah, I'm not interested in the aesthetics of it. I'm more interested in the function of it. But what could I use to create this? And you may already figured it out, but let me show you what I got. So this is a pair of suspenders. This is the Dickies brand. These are suspenders that you might wear for uh, work for holding your pants up, obviously. And they have quite a heavy duty clasp on the base of them. I call it an alligator clasp, but it's not quite. But look at the teeth on that. They are quite heavy duty. And of course, you put that down over your pants and snap it shut and it holds on quite securely. And I said, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So where am I going to get this? Well, off to Value Village, our local thrift store. And I looked until I found a pair like this, except I, I didn't pay very much for them. I didn't want a good pair to tear apart. But I waited until I found a pair that were in very sad shape. But the clasps were still in good shape. And that gave me four of these clasps, which would obviously be two to the front pair of suspenders and two to the back, depending on the design. But that's usually how most suspenders are. And that's what I used to create this. And all I had to do was take a small piece of webbing and run it between them and sew it. And I sewed it on a sewing machine, but this could just as easily be done by hand. And I have this, this uh, clasp that'll hold the two edges of my cloak together. It's a bit of a challenge to overlap the edges, but it's not that hard. You just reach further back onto the material on either side, and then you'll have some material in the center to close that gap up. But I also created this something just a little bit different based on the same, well, the other two clips that I had, and that was I took that same piece of nylon material, which happened to be an old shoulder strap off of a bag, and it had a slider on it to adjust the length of the shoulder strap, and I just left that on, and now I have one that I can make longer or shorter, depending on what I need it for. Do you know, I considered using the elastic material of the original set of suspenders. It was pretty much shot and it wasn't worth it. But if you have a good pair of suspenders that you don't mind cutting up, then the elastic material could also be used to go in between there. Um, doesn't really matter. This is what I use, and I think you can use any number of things. In fact, I'd be interested in knowing what you would do if you were going to create a pair of suspenders like this. Okay, so these work very well for the wool blanket, as you saw a minute ago, but look at those teeth. How would you feel about clipping those onto your down blanket or your wooby? Well, I've tried it on the wooby, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. It works well on the wooby, but I'm a little nervous doing this with my down blanket because I'm afraid that it's going to tear with any pressure on the side. So I came up with something else. Now, I haven't yet constructed it, but basically it's essentially the same thing. So these are suspenders that I also picked up at Value Village for $1.50 or $1.99. And these are ones that you might somebody might wear a, with a pair of dress pants going to work or going out somewhere. They were virtually brand new, but they have a slightly different clasp something that is designed so it won't cause damage on a piece of clothing. As you can see, there are two round pieces, top and bottom, on the clamp portion that are made in nylon and have very, very fine teeth on it. So now I can clip that over and with pressure and with a little bit of the teeth in action, they will hold on to the down blanket without causing any damage. It also works on, on the booby as well. So it's smaller, yes, but it's going to function exactly the same way. So let me show you how this works on the down blanket and the booby and how the larger one will work on the booby as well. 
So this is my down blanket that I picked up at Costco a few years ago. It's an Eddie Bauer brand, and I'm, I'm not even sure if Costco is still carrying these down blankets. I think the last one I saw were some type of a synthetic material, but they were still very nice. And these are great little blankets. They're not very expensive, and they pack down into this tiny little bag, and they provide just a nice little extra layer of insulation to take out on a day hike or a camping. So you can throw it over your shoulders for a little extra warmth on top of whatever else you're wearing, or wrap it around you at night, either sitting next to the fire, although as I mentioned, be careful with sparks, or when you're sleeping, you can just give you an extra layer to throw over a sleeping bag if the temperature starts to drop. Maybe somebody can tell me if Costco is still selling these. I haven't seen them recently, and I know they were available here in Canada, and I believe they were also available in the U.S. So that's not the subject of this uh, video, though, is it? So I did say that I had not converted this pair of dress, dress suspenders into a cloak clasp yet, but in order to make this work, all I would need to do is take the edge of the wool blanket, or sorry, the down blanket in this case, put some material inside, and snap it shut. Now, it holds on pretty good. I can't say it holds on so well. If I really yanked on it, it might come off. But you know, I consider that a bit of a safety thing because if I really came onto this and it did hold, I'd be a little afraid it might rip the wool blanket. So for just general wearing around a campsite to keep me warm and keep my hands free, I think this will work just fine. Okay, so this is how what I'll be cutting up and using to create a clasp for my down blankets, but I want to show you how I can use the other clasp with my wooby. So what in the world is a wooby? Well, a wooby is a nickname for a poncho liner, and this one is the American poncho liner. And basically, it's a very thin nylon shell that has a little bit of polyester lining in it, but it provides a surprising amount of warmth. They do come in this woodland camo. I don't know what other uh, colors they may come in. I also have one of the Canadian versions. The Canadian versions are slightly different in that in the center of the wooby, or the center of this poncho liner, it actually has a half circle zipped that I can open up to put my neck through for where wearing it with a poncho. But how am I going to wrap this around my shoulders? Well, same way you do a blanket. That's basically what it is. It's just a large, synthetically made blanket. And now I can just hold it together. Now, maybe you don't mind putting a pin through it, but it's not something I want to do, which again is the reason I created this cloak class. So to use this, put some material in, close it shut. Do the same thing on the other side. Woobies are slippery, by the way, because of the nylon material. There. Now this will hold shut. Let's see if I can pull that down a little bit for you to have a better look at it. All right. So this will hold my booby shut so I can wear it around my campsite hands-free. I suppose this makes it even easier if I wanted to sleep with it, just this on a very warm night. I can just leave this wrapped around me and just roll up inside of it and this will keep it shut so at least I don't fall out of it in the middle of the night. All right, so that's just a very simple DIY project that you can make with a set of suspenders, secondhand, ideally, something you picked up at the thrift store, either the type that has the teeth on it for use for maybe work workplaces, that's something that you are a little bit heavy duty with those heavy teeth, or maybe you're gonna pick up a pair of the dress ones so that you uh, don't mind using that with the synthetic blankets. I don't think the dress ones, the ones with that little nylon teeth are gonna work well on wool blankets. In fact, I think you'd have a hard time feeding the wool material through it. All right, so that's what I came up with. Something simple, something easy to make. I'm just wondering, do you have any suggestions and alternatives to this as well? If you do, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.